Well, friends, it was just over 50 years ago that President Lyndon Johnson signed two landmark pieces of legislation into law, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And with a stroke of a pen, President Johnson headed the country down the long, winding road towards the end of racial bigotry and hatred in this country. But the road is long, and that journey and that work still continues today. Now, through all the years of struggle, hardship, and hope, one song stood above all the others, We Shall Overcome. It was derived from an old gospel song called I'll Overcome Someday. It was adapted by black workers in the food and tobacco unions for the picket lines in 1945. And it went to unions across the South, eventually ending up at the Highlander Folk School. Zilphia Horton, the American community activist, civil rights worker, and union organizer, took this song all across the country and eventually taught it to Pete Seeger. And it would be Pete Seeger who would have that slow, churning rhythm that would turn this song into the hypnotically powerful statement of faith that it is today. On August the 28th of 1963, a 22-year-old folk singer by the name of Joan Baez led over a quarter million people in singing We Shall Overcome. President Lyndon Johnson used the phrase We Shall Overcome in a speech he delivered to Congress on March the 15th, 1965, after the bloody Sunday attacks in Selma, Alabama. Reverend Martin Luther King himself quoted the lyrics from We Shall Overcome in his final sermon delivered on March the 31st of 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. This song would factor heavily into the freedom songs and the freedom movements of Northern Ireland and South Africa where the song was banned from the airwaves and confiscated from the record stores. It has quite literally become the freedom song of the world. We shall overcome. We shall Sunday, they added this verse, we are not afraid.
with us as we sing that first verse one more time. We shall Thank you very much, folks. 